I'm imagining too that the uh, process would be that as you take the homeocords, that it sort of uh, moves things up maybe from the subconscious to the conscious uh, to maybe give more ability to look at them, address them. So is the process with you an ongoing process? It's not just uh, one time? No, um, usually, it depends on the situation, but usually it's an ongoing process where um, I speak with people over the phone and monitor their process, and then when they've completed the first set of remedies, then um, I'll either meet them if, or speak with them over the phone because I work with people over the phone who are not in my locale. Um, and we talk about what happened, and I assess with them the progress they've made, where is there still room for improvement and transformation and growth, and we might continue the same remedies or I might change the remedy at that time. And so there's a const there isn't a constant, but there's periodic evaluation of the progress and the experience of the individual, and then in the moment deciding where should it go next, what would support them in the deepest way. Like all things, I mean, in a lot of people, they come to a certain point and they've had the transformation they require and that's the end of it. In truth, we never stop transforming. Mm. It's a constantly evolving process. And so it varies with each individual. There is no formula mm. and that's the beauty of it. There mm. is no formula. Mm. It's merely being in the moment, present, and being honest enough to assess what's going on and then applying these, you know, for me, magical remedies that mm. come from nature mm. um, that have been used, the Bach flower remedies have been used for over 80 years by millions of people. So it's, it's well used, well documented, and tried and true in its effects. And um, so um, it's an amazing transformational tool, one I've used a long time. And like I said, when it's combined with the power of focus consciousness through intention mm -hmm. and invocation and feeling. Um, it's a powerful combination. Mm, and, and I find it, as do many, very transformative. Uh, if anyone has any questions about this uh, for Richard, you can see his, uh, when, especially when he's speaking, you'll see his email address. And he welcomes questions, richarddfisk at yahoo.com. Uh, welcome to email him, ask him any questions, and he'll respond. Uh, easy guy to talk to and email. Um, your wife of 30 years, Naomi, mm -hmm. uh, has been on this show. And for anyone who would be interested, uh, go to YouTube, put Life on Maui in the search. It's show number 22. They're, they're both involved in natural healing. Um, you... Um, spend about two-thirds of the year in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. You spend about a third of the year here. In Maui. Yeah. In Maui, which I, I know you'd like to spend more than <laughs> that here. I, I know that. Um, and your roots are in uh, the East Coast, New York. So uh -huh. just speak a little bit about your, uh, your New York roots and how you wound up moving to Santa Fe and from Santa Fe, Maui, which I think in a lot of ways feels like home to you now. Yeah. So how did well, that all happen? Well, um, you know, I did grow up um, about 25 miles from Manhattan in New York City. And um, for me, you know, this question actually is deeply reflective for me, interesting, because growing up, being born in Manhattan, growing up 20 miles, 25 miles away from Manhattan, I don't know of a bigger melting pot on planet Earth than New York City. Mm -hmm. There is more diversity. I think every culture, every food, every nuance is represented there in one way or another. And I think growing up in that type of atmosphere has, has made, you know, has affected me in a way where I am so deeply interested in so many different things. And I'm interested in in how people think and all the different ways that people think and all the different religions and just the unbelievable diversity of life. And then I went from there to Ohio where I went to college and I got a bachelor's degree. Kent State. Kent State University <coughs> after the tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a degree in sociology. 
and I didn't know at the time, well, what am I studying this for? And you know, sociology is the study of social systems and conditioning and how societies set up controls and set up the dynamics of how to organize themselves and organize people. Well, it's become paramount in my work this day because mm. I'm deeply interested in how people are conditioned and why they believe what they believe and how that binds them or mm. liberates them. Mm. So it, it's, it's all in line. And then I ended up back in New York for a few years and how I got to Santa Fe was is I, went, I went, wanted to go to a place called Dr. Shear's Academy of Massage and Natural Healing. Mm. And so I trained in massage and natural healing and I didn't know from Santa Fe, it was a name in the history books, but I literally put the U-Haul on the back of the car uh -huh. and drove out there not knowing where I was going to, and that was 30 years ago. Wow. So I've been living in the Southwest for 30 years, and I actually live outside in the mountains about 20 miles away. Um, and for me, Santa Fe has been a very deeply rich spiritual place a deep place to learn and practice my art and my craft. And then about, I've been coming to Maui since 1984, love Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And um, about four years ago, my brother moved here from Santa Fe and bought a house, and there just happened to be a guest cottage on the property, which Naomi and I purchased. So now there's the Maui home, mm -hmm. and um, I am absolutely delighted mm -hmm. that I get to live here and uh, be part of this amazing place, the part of the Maui family. And this, in, I've never felt such a feeling of tribal connection as I feel in Maui. Mm. The camaraderie and the connection between people and the way they share and get together and, and then just the absolute beauty of Maui. Um, mm. It's just, just a great blessing. Mm. I'm really grateful for the time I do get to spend here yeah. and grateful for the time I get to be, get to be in Santa Fe also. Yeah. So it's a, it's a... Ain't a bad life. No, it's a good you life. Know, good life. It's you a good know, life. It's a good life. Mostly winter here and then you go back for the spring and summer in Santa Fe, beautiful. A little so, bit of autumn. Yeah, yeah. You, might, yeah, you might want to miss a little bit more of the winter there, but you know, that'll yeah. happen. Yeah. That, that'll all happen. Yeah. Um, this is just a, a story about the uh, uh, power of homeopathy, uh, that in the uh, 1800s, there was a cholera epidemic in Europe. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> homeopathy played a, a, a very important role in uh, helping people, where uh, in most cases nothing else did. Uh, or, uh, so speak, speak to that because I think it will illustrate the power of homeopathy. Yeah. 